So church, today I want to talk to you about the significance of today. The calendar, the Christian calendar, no, it's not just Valentine's Day, but it's actually the beginning of a season within the Christian calendar called Lent. Most often celebrated by our liturgical friends, Orthodox friends, Lent. So let me talk to you a little bit about Lent and the significance of it. The two most holy books in your life as a follower of Jesus. Number one is our, is our Bible. It's the most holy book that we own. It's what we get our instructions for life from God's letter to us. The second holy book. Do you know what the second most holy book is in your life? It's your calendar. Because your calendar dictates how you live out what God has given to us and the instruction that he's given us. So our calendars are really important. Within the Christian calendar, there's some significant moments. Advent leading up to the birth of Christ, preparing ourselves for the first incarnation of Christ. Lent is preparing ourselves for the death and resurrection of Jesus. So my question to you, how are you preparing yourself for Easter this year? Easter comes early. It's March 31st this year. You're like, we just got through Christmas and live nativity. We just put everything away. Now it's time for Easter. The Christian calendar is, there's some significant moments. Now, what is Lent? And this might make some of us uncomfortable because you're like, we don't celebrate Lent. Let me just uh, give me a few moments to share with you in the importance of, of some of these moments. Lent focuses on three things. Now, number one, it's 40 days. There's significance in the number 40 in Scripture, right? Noah's Ark, uh, 40 days and nights. You have Jesus spending 40 days in the wilderness prior to his ministry beginning. It was significant. Jesus went to the wilderness and fasted for 40 days in the wilderness in preparation for his ministry. You have the Israel, nation of Israel, Israelites, wandering in the desert for 40 years. There's significance about the number of 40. And so today is 40 days, not including the Sundays, February 14th to March 31st, 40 days of Lent. Not including Sundays because that's a gathering. There's, there's joy and there's pleasure when, when we gather together. So not including the Sundays, 40 days. So today begins the march toward, toward Easter. And my question is, how are you preparing yourself for Easter? Easter comes early. There's some things we're going to do as a church. We'll, we'll uh, take a special offering uh, above and beyond our normal giving that will go to a special cause. Three components of Lent. Number one, prayer and fasting. Fasting, when Jesus speaks of fasting, is food. Now, there's a lot of complications around fasting. It's not for everyone. There's health complications. And, you know, I would, I would advise you to be very careful with that. But when Jesus speaks of fasting, it's, it's primarily food. Why food? Because food shows our utter dependence upon this physical substance for us to sustain life. For us to live, there needs to be food. And when we say no to food, we're showing our utter spiritual dependence upon God replacing food with our utter dependence on God. Jesus says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from God. So I'm sacrificing for a season, and I'm spending that time in prayer and intense focus. Fasting is like making a deposit today for a withdrawal tomorrow. When, when do we, people most often fast? Prior to a big decision, prior to a big meeting, prior to a, a difficult time in someone's life where you, you, you're coming upon something, and you're going to spend that time knowing tomorrow I'm going to need a big withdrawal. So it's ironic, right? Fasting, I'm going to say no to something, but it's actually making a deposit, spiritual deposit in my life. The word fasting, again, ironic, because time goes really slow when you fast, right? It's inconvenient. It's, it's often uncomfortable. What do you fast from? When Jesus spoke of fasting, again, it was food. However, today, what, what do most people often turn to when there's anxiety or there's worry or they can't sleep? They grab their phone and they begin to scroll. And I'm, I'm looking for a distraction from what I am dealing with in my life. You're sitting in the doctor's office and you're worried about what the doctor's going to say. And so we grab our phone and we begin to scroll. When we have a down moment, we grab that phone and begin to play solitaire or Tetris or something to distract us. So... Digital fast is becoming more and more popular. But I would say, do what God's asking you to do. If there's an area of your life that you find great comfort in and pleasure in, and it's distracting you from more important things, maybe that's an area 
that you lay down for a season. There's nothing magical about today, this day, 40 days, but, but maybe for a day, maybe for one meal. What is God calling you to do? Not to earn his favor. This is really important. This is not to earn God's favor or approval, but it's to grow in a relationship with him. It's an opportunity for me to sit in his presence a little longer than I normally would, to spend a little more time with him today than I normally would in preparation to looking toward the cross and then in anticipation of celebrating Easter. Uh, some say if you were to only fast, it changes your body, but if you pray and fast, it changes our perspective. And that would be the ultimate goal. God, help me to see things how you see them. The disciples were doing miracles in, in Mark chapter 9, and I think specifically they were casting out demons. And they said, Jesus, why weren't we able to cast out demons? You were, but, and Jesus says, there are some things that require prayer and fasting. There are some things that can only be done through prayer and fasting. So I don't see it as a command in the New Testament, but it's an assumption. When Jesus speaks the Sermon on the Mount, he says, when you pray and fast, and he gives some guidelines for that, when you fast. So for Protestants today, this might be uncomfortable and something, a practice we didn't grow up with. As a church, we're going to talk about some disciplines later this year, and one of those will be fasting why do we fast and the importance and significance of it. Uh, there are some other moments in the Christian calendar that we that don't get as much attention. The Easter tide or the Christmas tide is the time after Christmas. It, Easter tide is a time from the resurrection of Jesus to the to Pentecost, resurrection to the birth of the church. That's 50 days, and that is often called the Easter tide. But but the general principle here is, what is God calling you to do to prepare for Easter? Is there an area of your life that might have significant control over us that we can say no to in order to say yes to something greater? And then look at your calendar. Look at your calendar. That is the second most holy book in your life. Because out of your calendar, can see the importance and the value. Prayer and fasting, repentance, and almsgiving are the three components typically in leading up to Easter or the, the, the Lent season. My prayer as your pastor is that you would grow in your relationship with God as we head toward Easter, and you would do what God asks you to do. Uh, again, there's nothing magical about today um, or 40 days necessarily but do what God is asking you to do. And then I look forward to, as a church, we're, we're going to be sharing some things we're doing at Easter this year, uh, Good Friday and Easter services, so be on the lookout for that. But be, be in preparation. God, how would you use this Easter season in my life to reach a friend, to use my time? Maybe I need to say no to some things. Maybe I say, need to say yes to some things. Whatever it is, do what, do what God is asking you to do. And in that, I pray that you might find this sacred period of time. Right? It's so sacred in our culture. We rush and we run and we trying to catch our breath. And, and I think so often I know in my life, Jesus says, hey, I just, I just want to sit with you. Can you just carve out a little time, a little margin? So this time, this video is a little more on the informative and educational side and devotional side. But that would be my challenge to you as we begin the smarts toward Easter. I wanna pray for you. And so Father, I ask for wisdom. I ask that Holy Spirit, you would speak to each of us where we're at and you would be kind and gentle and patient with us in this area because this is new for many of us, but that you would teach us how to pray and how to fast in preparation for one of the most significant moments in, in the Christian life, this, the resurrection of Jesus. And so as we march toward Easter, would you give us wisdom? And then would you give us courage to do what you're asking us to do? In Jesus' name, amen.
if I can help you process any of this, reach out to me. We'd love to have this this conversation. There, there is one resource I came across recently um, by a respected author that I have, uh, Darren Whitehead, Dr. Darren Whitehead. He just wrote a book called The Digital Fast. And The Digital Fast, I think nothing but good can come from saying no to social media and technology for some of us. And there's good with technology, but man, there's there's a lot of distraction there as well. So maybe that's a something you might follow Jesus in as we head up to Easter, the digital fast, saying no to social media, but just a resource there. Uh, have a great rest of the week. I look forward to celebrating with you this weekend.